Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. You make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. Anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Rebel Hearts with Christy Reeves. I am so excited you're joining us today, and we have a lot of wonderful information for you today. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Usually our show is all about empowering the rebels, the change makers, the paradigm shifters of the world. And yes, there's going to be a lot of inspiration on this show, a lot of empowerment, but also we're going to do it a little bit more educational, and we will be talking about the science of water at... But before I introduce you to today's guest, let me share a little bit about one of my favorite co- cocoa, mushroom, coffees, and cacaos. Yes, there is something that is a cocoa or coffee mushroom drink, and it's called Four Sigmatic, and I love it. So Four Sigmatic is a superfood company. It was founded by a group of Finnish friends. It is based on their belief that health can be vastly improved through simple dietary tweaks. The easiest way to do this? Mushrooms, the most scientifically proven superfood. Four Sigmatic wants to popularize medicinal mushrooms by incorporating them in their popular products, like coffee and hot cocoa. Four Sigmatic was founded in 2012, and its products launched in the U.S. in 2015. And I usually have their Coco Rechi mushroom coffee in the morning, and it's amazing. So let me introduce you to today's guest, Halsey Snow. He's a partner in Golden Ratio Products, founder of the Golden Ratio Education Institute, and an explorer of the scientific metaphysical synergy. Today, with his wife, Patricia Marston Snow, he founded and directs the Vivamus Foundation, an international metaphysical research and education partnership with schools in the U.S. and Europe. He is an initiated Marielle Energy Healer and is certified in Matrix Energetics and NLP. Their product-based business, Golden Ratio Products, is the exclusive North American distributor for the glass and porcelain wear lines, a revitalizing tableware from Nature's Design Products, GmbH, Switzerland. And they were also a part of our swag bag contest that ended on June 30th. Thank you so much for being on today's show and welcome Halsey Snow. Yay! (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I am so excited on today's show, Halsey. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and educating us about water. I'm so excited about all the things you're going to share with our audience today. Okay. And I've actually came across Golden Ratio products in Germany first. Oh, yeah. And, and we went at, at store. It's actually the store where I do my lectures in Germany. And they had the glass were sitting there. And I thought it was just so gorgeous and so beautiful. I had no clue what it is about or what it was about but my mom and I both had to get the carafes and and the glasses and then only later we found out about the benefits of this glassware so it's not just beautiful there's also a lot of benefits so before we talk about that I actually want to hear your story about how you came across the glassware, and what inspired you? Because we want to hear the stories of inspiration. So what inspired Halsey Snow <laughs> <laughs> to say, hey, I want to import the glassware from Europe and sell it in the yeah. U.S.? What was your story, Halsey? Well, I've been into transformation for myself for a long time. And my wife and I, as you said, we, uh, we have an educational institute called the Biwamas Foundation. And uh, we so we sort of specialize in doing workshops and seminars and personal sessions for people who are interested in transformation. And as you mentioned, we do this both in the U S and in Europe. And so of course we were, we've been, we rent workshop space mm-hmm. in Oslo, Norway and Stockholm, Sweden and Berlin, Germany. And one of the spaces we happen to be renting in Oslo, uh, the woman who was renting it actually turned out to be the Norwegian distributor for this, line of glassware and she had it there in the space and 
we'd never seen it, never heard about it. We said, what's this? She gave us the story, kind of listened, said, uh-huh. Like I see a lot of people listening when I <laughs> give them the story now, you know, structured water. No, never heard of that. And, yeah. and we were there for four days. She said, go ahead and use it. She had a, a, you know, a spigot right in the classroom so we could fill up the carafes and, and drink it. And it was really, it was a different experience. It was it did something to the water. You can't quite tell what it is, you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we took one carafe home with us and started using it and discovered that we really liked it. And of course, the next time we went back, we got another carafe. <laughs> another one started passing them out to friends, you know, mm -hmm. say, try this. Tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah, How it's does really it taste? good. I like that. Yeah, because it and tastes so, different, And so, you know, right? it was one yeah. little thing after another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it tastes different. It feels different. Yeah, that's the thing is it feels different. It's and it's it's a funny thing because when we do trade shows and so on, you know, I'm always going to the grocery store buying a local, you know, bottled water from the store in the plastic gallon jugs and putting it into the uh, the largest carafe we have, which is a 10 liter mm -hmm. and then doing little taste tests with little Dixie cups, you know, mm -hmm. try this from the store and then try this very same water from the carafe and, you know. Nine out of 10 people notice a difference, mm -hmm. but it's funny. They, you know, we call it a taste test, but it's not really a taste test because taste in water is primarily a function of the minerals in the water and the pH of the water. And mm -hmm. there's really no change there. Mm -hmm. It's just a change in the way the molecules are clustering together. So it is, like you said, in the feel of it that, mm -hmm. it, that you notice a difference. Yeah. And I have to tell you this story. When I first had my Aladdin carafe and I had one of the little tumblers, as you call them, the, with the gold flower of life, and mm -hmm. I only had one of each. And yeah. my kitty at that time, his name was Jake, he loved that water. And mm -hmm. I would have the glass on my nightstand every night. And in the middle of the night, I would wake up and someone would go <laughs> and was drinking yeah. my water out of my glass. So I covered it up and Jake found ways to get whatever cover I put on it. And yeah. he started drinking out of it. And then yeah. I used the water and put it into his drinking bowl. He would still want to have my water out of my glass. He only wanted to drink out of the glassware. Uh -huh. So and for me, you know, I. As, as humans, you know, some of us more has more sensitive than others, but I see the the animals, no matter if it's dogs, cats, they're so sensitive to energies. And mm -hmm. something about that glass where literally attracted him. He did not want to drink any other water. He would mm -hmm. always look for mommy's glass and drink yeah. out of it. And I think yeah. you had a similar experience with your kitty, right? Yeah. Yeah. The cat Animals are instinctively attracted to it, partly because of the water being in a natural state like it is in nature, if they were, you know, outside, drink from a stream or drink from a pond, but also because the glassware, you know, the design of the glassware is based on the golden ratio, which is everywhere in nature. So mm -hmm. if you think about animals coming from nature, including ourselves, mm -hmm. but living in a human environment, domesticated animals, you know, a, a, a human environment, which is for the most part, not really designed on the basis of the golden ratio, then, you know, they're going to be really attracted subconsciously to whatever it is in their environment mm -hmm. is emanating that energy of the golden ratio, whatever is designed with it. And, and so I think that, you know, we see that as well with our mm -hmm. dogs and cats. Yeah. There's yeah. a real attraction yeah. there. So let's actually, since you talk, started talking about it, let's dive into that golden ratio. Because it's actually, there's an ancient science behind what is done to the shape of the carafe. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the golden ratio, and there's something else in that I want to let you, we'll let you explain in a moment. So what is the golden ratio? How does it show up in nature? And, and I know we'll have a few amazing images that we're going to throw up in the video over here. So what okay. is the golden ratio? What does it do? Well, the golden ratio is one of many different terms that are used to describe a point of geometry. So we're talking shape, form, size, right? Mm -hmm. And the, <clears throat> there's a it's a proportion and the proportion is one to 1.61803 ad infinitum. Actually, mm -hmm. it's a irrational number. There's no mm -hmm. end to it, but that proportion is found everywhere in nature. When you look at the geometry of anything that's alive and growing animal, vegetable, mineral doesn't matter in the proportions of the human body. When you look at proportions, you always find that golden ratio. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's called the golden mean. Sometimes it's called the divine proportion. Many different 
terms have been coined to you know identify it and it's uh, there it is in the in the in the shell of the nautilus which is a, a crustacean uh, you can see the spiral which is created you know from uh, a certain you see that spiral everywhere in nature as well um it's just once you start studying it it's amazing how universal it is mm -hmm. And do you know that you were actually the person, the very first person who ever told me about the golden ratio? And I remember saying to me when I met you six years ago, saying, Christy, you need to read a book called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life by Trunvalo Melchizedek. So yes. I did. I read both of his books. Oh, and yeah. he really goes into great details about the golden ratio and the flower of life. Mm -hmm. And since then, I have studied the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence, which is the other part I would love us to talk about in a moment. Right. And it's so interesting how, you know, even when we talk about how the animals are attracted to that particular water. And mm -hmm. as humans, we have become so disconnected from nature. And hopefully there is a, a drive within us that is going to go, oh, th we actually feel better when we're drinking that water because it is vibrating at the energy of nature. Mm -hmm. And the ancient Egyptians actually knew how to use the golden ratio in order mm -hmm. to create an environment that was according to how you know we operate how we show up in nature mm -hmm. and i remember looking at these pictures they have this shot of the pyramids from a bird's eye view and it looks really really random as if there's a pyramid over here a pyramid over there and over there so it looks like a little really messy when you look from from above and you wonder well if the egyptians were that highly educated and intelligent why did they throw the pyramids what seems to be just like in the middle of the desert without any plan. But if you connect the entrances of the pyramids, it mm. comes, the distance is according to the golden ratio, right? Yeah. And even yeah. the structures were built according to the golden ratio. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you find it in ancient structures everywhere. I mean, mm. you realize that, and this is one of the reasons why I decided to start the Golden Ratio Education Institute, because mm -hmm. in in doing trade shows over the past eight years and talking with people about structured water and about the glassware, I've come to the realization that less less than 5% of the adult population mm. in this country has ever heard of the golden ratio. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've been to school and you studied art or you've studied architecture or you studied music, there's a good chance you would hear about and have learned something about the golden ratio because it is incorporated into those curricula. But mm -hmm. outside of that, it's considered a mathematical novelty, really, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. something sort of esoteric that, oh, yes, mm -hmm. the golden ratio. And yet it's characteristic of <laughs> everything mm -hmm. in nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a there's a really good example of how widespread it is. You know, if you were to ask, if you were to do a survey mm -hmm. of people and and you were to ask the question, do you think it's important to live more in harmony with nature? How mm -hmm. many people do you think would say yes to that? Yeah. You mm -hmm. think it would be a majority? That's what I would think, yes. Probably a pretty big majority, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And yet, the easiest way to do that is to start incorporating the golden ratio into your everyday life. But how can you do that if you don't know what it is? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it's interesting you mentioned art. I actually took art classes in high school and I really loved art. I studied art a lot, but I never heard about the golden ratio until, like I said, Halsey Snow told me about it six years ago. And, and, and if I heard about it in my education, <laughs> it was long forgotten until I came across this glassware and started mm -hmm. learning about, you yeah. know, structured water yeah. and, you know, why it is, why it is mm -hmm. that the shape, and this is another thing that really blows people's minds, mm -hmm. as they, they, they look at the glassware and they say, okay, what is it that makes the water change? Mm -hmm. Is it the way you pour it in? Does it have to spiral <laughs> down? I say, no, it's the shape yeah. of the glassware. Yeah. And they kind of look like, huh? Mm -hmm. It's so hard for so many people to believe that the shape of a container can have an energetic effect on what is mm -hmm. held within it. Yeah, yeah. But it's microcosm, macrocosm. We know the picture of the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. And I quite often, when I, when I first started researching the golden ratio, I saw the picture of the Mona Lisa with a golden ratio in her face. Right. 
Those are yeah. the, usually the two big things you come across. Right. So it's, you know, and if, if the golden ratio exists within us, why mm. are we not creating our surroundings according to the golden ratio? Kind of like the Egyptians did, where mm. the, the rooms, the distances between the rooms, or the, you know, say, the, between the bottom and the window and then the top mm. ceiling, were all according to the golden ratio. So our environment actually vibrates at the same energy that we as humans vibrate at. Right, exactly. Well, like I said, you know, for the most part, you know, the golden ratio in terms of our education has been relegated to, you know, the realm of math and science. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when, as soon as you tell people it's a mathematical concept, most of them say, oh, I was never very good at math. Mm -hmm. you know? So they kind of dismiss it. Yeah. But there, there, there is a shift taking place now. Um, there's a new book out. It's since 2012 called The Golden Ratio Lifestyle Diet. It's one of the mm -hmm. books we offer on our website. I really recommend it. It's written by uh, a doctor and a Fortune 500 consultant, Matthew Cross and uh, Robert Friedman. There mm -hmm. it is. It's in its second edition now. The second edition is just out this year. And what they've done is they've taken the golden ratio out of the realm of science and math and the esoteric and showing you how you can incorporate it into different aspects of your everyday life. That's why they call mm. it the lifestyle diet. Mm, amazing. It's really brilliant. And I think it's one of the most important educational books that anyone could read mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. Again, along the lines of what we're talking about, you know, if you really want to incorporate it into your everyday life. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Everybody who's listening, get the book. Go to the website and get the book. Um, there's also another aspect that is in the carafe that is called the Fibonacci sequence. Would you tell us what the Fibonacci sequence is about and what it is? Sure. Um, it's named after an Italian a mathematician, mm -hmm. surprisingly named <laughs> Leonardo Fibonacci. Mm -hmm. He lived in the 13th century and he, uh, he traveled to the far east and studied math with the Indian, the Vedic, you know, mm -hmm. mathematicians. And mm -hmm. one of the things that he's um, noted for is bringing the concept of zero back into Western European mathematics at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Fibonacci sequence was another thing that he learned from his studies in the Far East. Now, the Fibonacci sequence is just a sequence of numbers. It starts with the number one. And every number in the sequence is the sum of the two previous numbers. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's not one, two, three, four, it's one, one, two, three, five, and it goes up from there. You add the, the, the next number to the previous number and you get the next number. So you can see it's an exponential sequence. It mm -hmm. goes up very fast and that's where you get the golden ratio spiral from. And it's essentially the same as the golden ratio. One of mm -hmm. the things they show in that book, the golden ratio lifestyle diet is they have a graph where they plot what it looks like if you divide every two adjacent numbers in the Fibonacci sequence into each other, you get this graph, which as the numbers get bigger, you know, it kind of, it kind of centers out onto mm -hmm. the 1.61803, mm -hmm. the golden ratio number itself. Amazing. So it's really the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, but that's an easier that's an easier form of the golden ratio to be able to use in creating uh, something like glassware is what they discovered because mm -hmm. you can make proportions in a carafe or in a glass based on the Fibonacci sequence mm -hmm. and it vibrates with the energy of mm -hmm. the golden ratio. That's mm -hmm. a perfect example of yeah. it. That's the, that's the form that was first created in this glassware line from that aha moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see how we get the golden ratio or the Fibonacci sequence into glassware. And that's that's how you do it. That's yeah, one way to do yeah. it. And we can see the Fibonacci. Thank you so much. You were reading my mind, Jarvis, <laughs> for bringing out that picture. You can see the Fibonacci sequence in the glassware. So whoever is listening on this on a podcast, we also will have this up on iTunes, mm. Facebook Live. You can rewatch it over there. So you, it actually might be interesting to watch the show, not just to listen to this. Because we have this beautiful image of the carafe, and it actually shows you the one, one, three, five, eight, eleven yeah. right. Fibonacci sequence and how it's incorporated into the shape of the carafe. And you know, and you yeah. also see how gorgeous it actually looks. When you look at that carafe, you know, some people recognize for the, for example, that it looks a lot like a um, stupa. Mm -hmm. 
which is a prayer temple, mm -hmm. you know, in Nepal, Tibet, you know, mm -hmm. those areas of the world. That's the that's the big craft there, the universe. Uh, same shape. Yeah. You know, and if you wanted to harmonize yourself <laughs> with the world and with cosmic energies, what better way than to use the golden ratio, which is sort of like I call it nature's blueprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. it seems to be everywhere mm -hmm. in nature. And it has a special, let's, let's go back to what you said earlier. Well, how can a shape do something to water? And it's actually right. really interesting. I have the 10 liter carafe. And two things. First of all, I had it at my house and my fr one of my friends came over and she's very energetically sensitive. And she's like, and she stood in front of me. She's like, I feel the energy. I feel the energy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I feel so good. And she just stood in front of the carafe, feeling yeah. the energy from the vibrating from the carafe. Right. And when then, it's got water in it, it's quite an, it's quite a, an instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I remember the first time I actually had to, wanted to wash the carafe and I hosted off. You know how these things, the thing in the kitchen. So I, and there's yeah. actually a sound. I'm like, I'm playing music, right. cleaning my carafe. Because each, each ripple had a different vibration, yeah. a different sound, a different note. And I'm like, oh, I love hosing now my carafe over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's quite an interesting piece. And yeah. uh, and it's, it's unique. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this glassware is made in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's it's mouth blown. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, there's only one or two pieces in the whole line that are machine made. So mm -hmm. it's really it's it's made by hand. Uh, it's a natural substance. There's no additives to mm -hmm. it. No, you know, lead. It's standard quartz glass. There's mm -hmm. no lead in it. There's no. The only thing is there's a few pieces like the larger ones because um, they need to be washed with hot water. Mm -hmm. They make a, they make it out of a formulation called borosilica glass, which is mm -hmm. what they do to make glass withstand heat. Okay. But other than that, it's just standard quartz glass. And that, that shows the water bottle there, which I think is really good. You know, glass mm -hmm. water bottles are mm -hmm. becoming a little bit more popular. Yeah. Even yeah. though we still see plastic being the predominant form of, mm -hmm. you know, the way to carry your water mm -hmm. around, which is the worst way to carry your water mm -hmm. around. But glass, water likes glass. Yeah. At best. And how we know that, this is very interesting, yeah, is that once you've restructured your water, let's say mm -hmm. in one of these carafes or a glass, you can put it into another container mm -hmm. and it will stay restructured. In other words, in its natural state mm -hmm. for varying lengths of time, depending on the material of the container you put it into. I didn't know that. Amazing. For example, mm -hmm. if you put it into a glass container, let's say you pour it out of your carafe into a mason jar mm -hmm. and you put it in your refrigerator, that water will stay structured up to a week. Wow. Wow. Let's say you put it into a stainless steel water container, mm -hmm. which are also popular, one or two days, and then it'll be unstructured again. Interesting. Let's say you put it into plastic, which of course we don't recommend, but mm -hmm. you can put it into plastic. Mm -hmm. That water will become unstructured in a matter of hours. Wow. Hours. So, yeah, hours. Amazing. So, you know, yeah. any water that you're getting in plastic is unstructured, guaranteed. Yeah. You know, any water you're getting from anywhere, unless it's coming from a spring, mm -hmm is unstructured because it's been processed. Yeah. And this is one of the major points of, you know, that I'm mm -hmm. communicating to people most of the time is that you know, people have all kinds of concerns about water quality. Mm -hmm. And I think most people these days, when they think about water quality, they think about where's it coming from? Mm -hmm. Is it a source I can trust? Mm -hmm. Is it clean? Is mm -hmm. it pure? Is mm -hmm. it safe? You know, and then maybe they're thinking about, does it have good mineral balance in it and yeah. what the pH is? Yeah. And if you go that far, as far as thinking about your water quality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, you're probably, you're at the edge of where most people are when it comes mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the considerations that they mm -hmm. put into water yeah. quality. Yeah. And very few people, again, we're talking less than 10% of the people have ever heard the concept of structured water or even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And yet it's the most important thing when it comes to water's ability to hydrate the cells of your body. Let's talk about structured water. Let's go talk about water and how water occurs in nature and what structured water is. And I did an experiment I want to share, but let's talk about what is structured water, Halsey. Okay, well... The easiest way to think about it is to think about a snowflake. Mm -hmm. Everyone can think about a snowflake because you've seen designs mm -hmm. of it. You've seen pictures of it. You've seen mm -hmm. it falling from the sky. You've held it on your hand, perhaps, if you live in the north. 
um, you know, in the winter time and seeing the, the structure of it, every snowflake is a hexagon. Mm -hmm. Hexagon means six sided, mm -hmm. right? Six sided. They're all different, but they're all hexagons. And why is that? And the reason that is, is because that is water's natural state. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Of course, it's still H2O. It's H2O. But those H2O molecules cluster together in hexagonal units in nature. Mm. When water is flowing and moving anywhere in nature, in a stream, in a lake, in the rain, inside the earth, the water molecules, even in the liquid state, are clustered together in hexagonal units. So if you freeze it, you always get a snowflake. Mm -hmm. The snowflake design. Ah, uh, amazing. The problem comes in mm -hmm. with the water technology that we use to transport and store and process the water that we bring to us to make it safe and to make it available and to make it clean and all the things we want our water to be. Mm -hmm. The water technology that we use causes the water to lose that hexagonal structure. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the snowflake design. You get, you know, if you take a, a frozen, a, a sample of frozen water that it's unstructured, you take a picture of it, you don't see the snowflake design. It looks mm -hmm. like a blob. It looks mm -hmm. like nothing. There's a mm -hmm. good example of it right there. See that? It's a blob. You can see the parts of it. It's mm -hmm. broken apart. Mm -hmm. And that the reason for that is simply because we use straight pipes. We put water under pressure. We put it through filters. We mm -hmm. put chemicals in it. We store it in plastic. It stays stagnant. Everything that we do to water causes it to lose its structure. It's yeah. amazing. You yeah. think that our water processing structure mm -hmm. was designed by someone with the intention of unstructuring the water. <laughs> yeah, now, I just want to say right. something about why structured water, i.e. water in its natural mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. is so important mm -hmm. to you and me and everyone else because yeah. your body of course is 75 percent water mm -hmm. yeah every cell in your body needs water to carry out its essential functions mm -hmm. there's a good example there's the there's the vortex water is always moving in a vortex in nature that's partly mm -hmm. how it keeps itself structured mm -hmm. so every cell in your body uses water for nutrients in, toxins out, right? Water is the carrier mm -hmm. on the cellular level. Nutrients mm -hmm. in, toxins out. And the cell wall, which is the part of the cell that decides what to let in and what to put out, mm -hmm. is looking for water in its natural state. Makes because sense. Because yeah. to the cells of your body, that's what water is. Mm -hmm. It's hexagonal. Mm -hmm. The cell is designed to recognize water in hexagonal shape. And if it doesn't find it, it doesn't know what it's dealing with. Mm -hmm. There it is. There's there's the different aspects of our water technology that causes water to lose its structure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can be drinking a lot of water. Everyone knows it's important to drink a lot of water, but you're drinking unstructured water. No wonder you have to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Your cells are having a hard time using it. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody who's drinking unstructured water is holding toxins in their body. One of the things we find when people start either using the glassware, and I, I, I'll just say, you know, because this is educational, even though I am selling a product, <laughs> there are other means of structuring water mm -hmm. than the glassware that we sell. Mm -hmm. There are many other technologies, because this has been known for some time, mm -hmm. that, you know, structured water is water in its natural state and that we have unstructured water that we're yeah. drinking. Yeah. Uh, that if you... Start drinking only structured water because you've been drinking unstructured water your whole life. Mm -hmm. In two to three days, your body will automatically go into a detox mode. Yeah. And why is that? Because everything inside on a cellular level is getting easier. All the cells mm -hmm. are able mm -hmm. to release, you know, certain levels of toxicity they're holding on to because they're not getting structured water. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what they need in order to function in an optimal way. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I'm going to tell you really quick about my test that I did before the show. Yeah. Okay. Because I've been drinking structured water for about six years, ever since I discovered the glassware, maybe six and a half, nearly seven. Yeah. I think it was yeah. 2010, 2011 that I discovered it. And LA 
especially right now, we've been dealing with 110 Fahrenheit over here. So it's been really hot in the valley where I live. Yeah. Oh. And the air is really, really dry. Mm. So I drank unstructured water for two weeks. Not you using. Did? Yes. I, Why I, would you do that? I made a test. I did a little test yeah. on myself. And my skin, my whole body became so dry. And I have pretty good water. I'm actually giving a shout out to Castle Rock Water Company because it's glacier water that is yeah. high altitude, amazing quality. But mm -hmm. you know, if it's, it's been out processed. of glass out of glass bottles, it's been sitting yeah. in there, so no more structure yet left. Yeah. So I've been drinking my water and I've been drinking probably about four liters a day to just feel a little hydrated. And I even had to add electrolytes. Even the electrolytes weren't doing it anymore. Yeah. So I went back to drinking my structured water. It was like day three, four, or five that my body felt completely different. Mm -hmm. I could let go of the electrolytes and needed less water. I'm drinking still a lot, like two to three liters at the moment, maybe two and a half, because yeah. it still is very hot and I and I work out, so I sweat, yeah. so I need to rehydrate, rehydrate. But my body felt completely different going back to drinking structured water. My skin yeah. felt different. So everybody who wants to look beautiful, mm. have good skin, the water makes all the difference. The structure in the water made my skin feel different. Right. And I felt different. I had more energy. I was less drained at the end of the day, especially dealing with 112 Fahrenheit. So it, I, I, I like to do this little experiment. Says it, so it really showed me the difference between the, like, yeah. like such a little adjustment could make in my life and in my physical well-being and how I felt in my whole body. Right. So, yeah. yeah. That's a really interesting experiment that you did with yourself, Christy. That's uh, that was very brave of you <laughs> to do that. But, it, you know, it it was good. It showed you very clearly, you mm -hmm. know, the difference in your own experience. Yeah. And of course, everyone's going to have a little bit different experience mm -hmm. themselves. But generally speaking, the majority of people have been drinking unstructured water their whole mm -hmm. life and not mm -hmm. knowing it. And yeah. it does make a difference mm -hmm. yeah. to and your physical body. Exactly. And there's something else to the water, which is called BOVIS units, the measurable Bovis, life force. Yeah. B it's B-O-V-I-S for everybody yeah. who is listening. Yeah. So tell us about the BOVIS unit and what actually happens between the water that we're drinking, especially water that goes through pipes, reverse osmosis, filtration systems, and what happens to the bovis units when we restructure the water. Okay, well, bovis units is named after a French scientist whose last name is Bovis. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm even pronouncing that correctly. Maybe it's Bovis. <laughs> I don't know. Just you can you can read about it on mm -hmm. um, on uh, Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it is a, a somewhat controversial. Unit. He claims to have developed a means of measuring life force energy. Mm -hmm. And of course, for science, that's, you know, that's a stretch. But yeah. be that as it may. Um, and so having done this, you know, you then, you know, start asking some questions. OK, what's a normal, healthy human body? How many bovis units are we vibrating at here? Mm -hmm. And uh, he found out it's, you know, it's around 6000 bovis units. Mm -hmm. And then you can measure you know, the, uh, the, you could say the life force energy in the food and water you're drinking, mm -hmm. because if you want to maintain or improve your health, you should of course be taking in nutrients, which have higher bovis units mm -hmm. than, you know, what your body is at, mm -hmm. because if you're taking in, you know, nutrients and, uh, and water with lower bovis units, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. It's gonna, you're, you're going to lose life force yeah, energy. Yeah. And so, when they studied water, what they found is that most water, bottled water, tap water, you know, is vibrating around 500 bovis units. Wow. Not really even Very close mm -hmm. to what a healthy human body needs. Mm -hmm. And when they first developed the shape of the Aladdin carafe, which you were showing earlier, um, they did a test with that to mm -hmm. see, okay, water that's been in the Aladdin carafe, that's been restructured. How many bovis units is that mm -hmm. vibrating at? Mm -hmm. Wow. 25,000 bovis Amazing. units in Amazing. the water that's been sitting in the Aladdin Quran. Wow. So it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. And you can look at it on many different levels, mm -hmm. whether it's the physical level, looking mm -hmm. at the structure of the water, mm -hmm. an energetic level, looking at the bovis units. You, you, you can notice a difference. Yeah, yeah. 
And again, going back to what we know or what we talked about earlier, we know about the Fibonacci sequence. We know about the golden life, what they used to know about it in the ancient days Mm -hmm. and did everything that was in harmony with nature. Where, you know, like we said, we, we, they created buildings in Egypt and in and, and the Mayan temples and, you know, in many places of the world that were according to you know, our, the, our microscope, microcosm, right. how, how we, yeah. we f- show up in the world. Yeah. And then again, how does water show up in the world, in yeah. nature? How does water show up in nature? And, and you talked about it meanders, it moves, it creates vortexes that is right. giving them its life force, its structure. Yeah. And by us putting it through all these systems and pipes and all all the tech, new technology, the modern technology that we have, it's kind of creating so much stress that all the life force is gone. I always say to my friends, imagine you going through a two-mile pipe. You wouldn't have too much life force left afterwards, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is what happens to the water. So what what is actually happening with the glass where you're bringing the water back in the way the way it shows up in nature? Right. And, you know, that's kind of a a very interesting point. It's an amazing thing because people look at the glass and I tell them, you know, it's not the way the water pours down the side. Mm -hmm. You don't have to swirl it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be full. And they say, yeah, but it's sitting there stagnant. And you said stagnation was one of the things that unstructures water. I said, yeah, that's Mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Stagnation is one of the factors that unstructures water. Mm -hmm. But isn't it amazing that that a A glass container Mm -hmm. that was designed using the golden ratio is enough Mm -hmm. for water Mm -hmm. to move itself Mm -hmm. back into its natural state. That little amount Mm -hmm. of golden ratio, it's like you've been out of your natural environment for how long? It's like somebody took you and they stuck you in a closet for 10 (laughs) years. You know, you would be a little distorted when you came out of the closet, Mm -hmm. you know, a little disoriented and a little out of shape Mm -hmm. and... But, you know, for water, water is not just a substance. Mm -hmm. Water is much more than that. Water has a lot of properties that science doesn't really understand even Mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And the more you study it, the more you realize water is a lot like consciousness. You can't quite put your finger on it. You Mm -hmm. can't really define what it is, yet it's there and you know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the examples that I use when I'm talking to people is uh, I I ask people, I said, have you ever heard of feng shui? Mm -hmm. Now, this is interesting because 10, 20 years ago, 90% of people never would have heard of feng shui. Today, it's very different. Mm -hmm. There's been enough, you know, dissemination of information and books out into the mass consciousness that I would say it's more like 50 or percent or more people have heard of feng shui, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. even though they might not know what it is. Yeah. And so I give them my definition of feng shui, which is this. Okay. The design of the physical environment mm-hmm. and the placement of objects in that environment mm-hmm. affects the flow of energy in the environment, which mm-hmm. the Chinese call qi, mm-hmm. right? Our life force. Yeah. And that affects your experience when mm-hmm. you're in that environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Simple. Mm-hmm. So shape does matter Mm -hmm. placement does matter Mm -hmm. the golden ratio as a principle in the design and shape of Mm -hmm. our environment does matter and it Mm -hmm. water is the best way to show that it matters to water because as soon as we take water from anywhere to process it for our uses Mm -hmm. it's out of an environment in which there's any golden ratio. And this is one of the things I've been thinking about for some time. Think about the large waterworks companies, you Mm -hmm. know, that provide Mm -hmm. water for the large cities and the municipalities all over the country and the world, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, they're dealing with a technology that is changing and Mm -hmm. is evolving. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, has been the same for a long Mm -hmm. time where we Mm -hmm. have to deal with huge quantities Mm -hmm. of water Mm -hmm. that we need to make clean and we need to make pure and we need to make potable up to a certain standard defined for us by the government. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing in the technology that's been designed using the golden ratio. Mm -hmm. What if all the engineering companies that design the valves and the pipes Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the gauges and all the different pieces of technology that we use to process our water Mm -hmm. started designing those using the golden ratio. I wonder what difference that would make in processing the 
the vast volumes of water mm -hmm. that are provided for us by municipal water companies. Do you There's know, no reason it couldn't be done. Yeah. Do you know how much I love that idea? Maybe there's an engineer listening to this. Maybe. And he, and he wants I mean, to get in touch with you. You know, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about pretty fundamental large-scale mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, in industry, there's a mm -hmm. whole industry that supplies the water industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of investment in that mm -hmm. industry. But how come no one's thought of that? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I have I have some, I have a story to tell. I was we were subletting a room in our old house to a med student who was really highly sensitive to EMFs. Mm -hmm. And the computer was at the wall towards his room and he could mm -hmm. feel it through the wall. So we put the mm -hmm. flower of life, just a printout of the flower of life in between his room and the computer. He's like, I can feel the difference. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. He was that sensitive. And then he came to me, he said, Hey, my mom actually knows this guy. He's an architect, and he's been studying sacred geometry. And he and I don't know where he where the, where the architect is. But I think in Los Angeles. And he's like, and he's now implementing sacred geometry into the way he designs his houses. Great. And and I, you know, I'm such a big believer of collecting what we now nowadays with all the new technology that we have, all the things that we have learned from, you know, the we're in the age of technology, the age of information right now and right. connecting it with the ancient wisdom. What has worked in the past? How mm -hmm. have we lived in the past where we did build houses, the pyramids, right. even the, the ratio between the houses according to the golden ratio, according to that sacred geometry, the ancient wisdom. So we can actually kind of alchemize or marry that ancient wisdom with our modern technology and see, well, what can we do to feel better? Right. To be more vital. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's a lot we can do. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I've discovered. You know, when I, when I give talks to people, and um, or I, I'm at a trade show, I tell them, you know, I am not an expert on water mm -hmm. and I am not an expert on math mm -hmm. or the golden ratio. I am a student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been studying this now for about eight years. That's mm -hmm. how long we've been doing this. Yeah, yeah. I'm still learning a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sharing with you what I've learned now. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mm -hmm. have a PhD in psychology from Boston University. So I understand and I know science and mm -hmm. I spent most of my adult life actually in the metaphysical field, mm -hmm. you know, so I know something about that too. And I really can appreciate, you know, the ways that, that there is, there is a synergy coming together mm -hmm. of scientific awareness and metaphysical, you know, mm -hmm. wisdom. Yeah. Um, and, and I think water is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to give a little pitch for one more uh, yeah. book here MJ's. called <laughs> Dancing with Water. Yes. By M.J. Pengman and Melanie mm -hmm. Evans. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best books on water I recommend to everybody. It's also out in its second edition just this year. Amazing. Um, and, and one of the beautiful things about that book is that she takes the science of water, explains it in a way that's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not too technical. Mm -hmm. And it's thoroughly documented with all the research behind it. But it also mm -hmm. incorporates the metaphysics of water, yes. how water is something more than just what science says mm -hmm. it is. It's much mm -hmm. more than just H2O. Yeah. And you can get a sense of that, you know, mm -hmm. from reading the book and mm -hmm. like doing things like you did with your little personal experiment mm -hmm. and, and discovering that, you know, your water responds mm -hmm. to the water that you bring mm -hmm. to yourself yeah. 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 because you're a water being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love, love that book, by the way. And I got the honor of meeting MJ at one of the expos a few years ago. And like you said, I'm not really sometimes into scientific books, but mm. that book is so well it's written. Easy to read. Yeah. I couldn't stop reading because it was so exciting to, yeah. to read all the information that MJ has in the book. And I have another experiment I want to share with you. Okay. As you know, I work with the University for Integrative Energetic Medicine, and we have biannual summits, and they go from oh, yeah. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And we had our summit with well, probably a couple of years ago at one of the big hotels here in, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And by noon, all of the students were clonking out. They were literally sitting in the classroom like this. Oh, yeah. No one could concentrate anymore. But like, it's, yeah. it's not the content. The content is very interesting. So what is going on? So yeah. after, and I, was the, and I was filming, and I was mm -hmm. the only one who wasn't clonking out. 
-hmm. And then one of the students actually had one of those EMF measuring devices on her. And during our break, she measured it. She's like, I cannot even measure the EMFs, which is electromagnetic field and electromagnetic radiation for you know our listeners. Yeah were so high that the, the thing didn't even measure it anymore. It was beyond what, what the, the little machine could measure. So we in must, the environment you were sitting in? Yeah, so we must have sat on a major power line over there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I had my golden ratio glassware carafe with me. <laughs> yeah. And I like something called shungite, which is a crystal in their specific water shungite, which is good for radiation. Right. And, I yeah. put, and I have my water shungite actually within the carafes. That's how I drink my, my, my water. Yeah. Great so I was mm -hmm, exactly yeah. So I was drinking my Shanghai structured mm -hmm. high life force water all day. I was the only one who wasn't tired. I was yeah. the only one who could concentrate. Luckily, so I knew I wanted to press the pause and record button on the on, on the camera. Yeah, but yeah. it made such a difference yeah. to actually be you know to put that life force back in myself or to have that structure right. of the water that was toxing the radiation right yeah. out of my DNA, right out of, out of my my cells. Right. Now, let's combine that, Christy, mm -hmm. with the example that you gave earlier about putting the flower of life on a wall between, mm -hmm. you know, your tenant yeah. and where the computer was. Mm -hmm. So all the people who were at that conference, you could take a minute mm -hmm. to focus in a combined guided meditation. There's the flower of life perfectly. Mm -hmm. Putting the flower of life on the walls of the room, on the floor of the room, on the ceiling mm -hmm. of the room to provide a level of vibration and protection against yeah. EMFs. Yeah. And all you have to do is think it. Amazing. Because it's created by your intention. Mm -hmm. We know intention is one of the most powerful things in the universe. Mm -hmm. And we play with it all the time, but usually unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, intention, yeah. and this is, this brings us, uh, brings us to the work of one of the real giants on whose shoulders we stand in this, <laughs> this thing, which is Masaru Emoto, yes. Japanese scientist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who wrote five books about water. And he was mm -hmm. the one that kind of discovered that water responds to human yeah. intention yeah. in the form of thought, word, mm -hmm. feeling, mm -hmm. prayer, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There he is with uh, the that's him on the left there um, with uh, a friend of mine, uh, Richard Grassi from uh, mm -hmm. the Minneapolis area. He unfortunately passed away a few yeah. years ago, but you know, he, he's the one he, in my talks, I say, mm -hmm. and there's his first book, the hidden messages in water. Mm -hmm. I say two things. There's two really important things that Masaru Emoto did as a pioneer. One, mm -hmm. he pioneered the technique mm -hmm. of using frozen water crystal photography mm -hmm. as a means of demonstrating qualitative differences in water. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was that he demonstrated that water responds to human intention mm -hmm. in the form of thought, feeling, words, or yeah, prayer. Yeah. You know, one of the first experiments he did was he would take tap water, put it in the glass bottle, and write a word on a piece of paper and stick the paper on the side of the bottle mm -hmm. and see what would happen to the water. Mm -hmm. And he would, you know, again, take a sample of the water beforehand, mm -hmm. freeze it, mm -hmm. look at the structure. It was unstructured. We've seen what that looks mm -hmm. like. You know, it's a blob. Mm -hmm. And then see what it looks like. His books are filled with yeah, pictures yeah. like this. They're incredible. You know, pictures yeah. of what happens with specific intentions to the water. The water reflects the intention. You can see it in the crystal. You can mm -hmm. see it in the different shapes the crystal shows. They're all hexagonal, mm -hmm. but they take different shapes. And sometimes in the very center of that hexagonal snowflake design, you can see pictures themselves of Amazing. what, yeah. you know, the word or the thought or the feeling is vibrating. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just amazing it yeah. shows you how much water is really the basis for our consciousness yeah, yeah and if you think about again microcosm macrocosm the water we put in our body the water that is in our body how that water responds to our thoughts and our emotions yeah very yeah. much so yeah and didn't he do an ex uh, an experiment was that emoto himself or people who worked with him who went to a lake and they created a circle around the lake, a polluted lake, and they mm -hmm. did water crystal samples before, and then they spoke a prayer or did some kind of, like, sent healing energy or something into the water, and mm -hmm. then took a picture, or, like, did the, the, the testing of yeah. the crystals well, afterwards, yep. right, and it completely changed Yeah, from Except the prayer. Except there's one thing about that uh, experiment, Christy. Mm -hmm. They weren't on site. 
Oh, they weren't on site. I thought they were. They on did site. it remotely. Oh my gosh! They were miles away from that body mm -hmm. of water. That's the incredible. only person there was the person taking the samples. Oh my gosh, I'm getting chills. <laughs> yeah. So you know that's and that's um, that brings me to another point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a couple things I've been putting together from different readings. One of the mm -hmm. things that I uh, was introduced to in the Dancing with Water book mm -hmm. was the work of Victor Schauberger. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now Victor Schauberger was an Austrian forester. Mm -hmm. He passed away actually right around the time I was born, 1952. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was 54 he passed mm -hmm. away. But so he was a forester for this was before Austria was a modern state, you know, mm -hmm. back when there were still large, um, you know, princes and so mm -hmm. on that owned mm -hmm. large tracts of land. And he was he was given, a you know, a large area of forest to manage. Yeah. And he wasn't an educated man. He didn't go to university. He, mm -hmm. you know, his father was a forester. His grandfather mm -hmm. was a forester. Mm -hmm. He was self-educated, educated, yeah, yeah. you know, by nature. Mm -hmm. He was very observant. And he, mm -hmm. his work is another work that I would really recommend people look into because it's yeah. mind-blowing what he learned about water. And mm -hmm. he figured out that water at a certain temperature you know, you could float logs down from up on the mountain that couldn't be moved any other way. Wow. And wow. he, you know, he figured out, you know, why the vortex is so important in mm -hmm. water because mm -hmm. he would see salmon, mm -hmm. you know, in the in a fast moving stream, wow. Wow. holding themselves stationary with very little effort. Wow. How does a salmon do that? You know, yeah, if you yeah. were in that stream, yeah. you would have to swimming you know, <laughs> we have to work hard what happens is the yeah. salmon finds the vortex in the water and it wow. sticks itself right in the middle of the vortex where there's almost no movement because in the center of a vortex everything is still mm -hmm. just like the eye of a hurricane right mm -hmm. one of the biggest vortices that yeah. we experience yeah. on the face of this planet yeah. is a hurricane yeah. it's a vortex that's mm -hmm. how water moves in its mm -hmm. natural state amazing but in the center it's still mm -hmm. so anyway victor schauberger had a he he came to believe that the state of water in nature, mm -hmm. close to where you are, wherever you are, yeah. you look at what's around you, streams, ponds, brooks, you know, anybody's water. He came to believe that the quality and the state of water around you affects your health. Um, incredible. Wow. Yeah. Now, this is something that I don't think has really been explored no, or all. studied, you know, scientifically at mm -hmm. all. But it makes perfect sense, makes sense if yeah. you if you think about the holographic universe that we're mm -hmm. all connected, mm -hmm. that, you know, there is nothing that isn't connected mm -hmm. to anything else. Yeah. And the fact that your body is 75 percent water, you are mm -hmm. basically a mm -hmm. water being. Yeah. Then, of course, yeah. the quality of water around mm -hmm. where you live is going to affect you because Absolutely. you and it are in a, you know, a symbiotic relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. You affect each other. Yeah. So. Amazing. That's an interesting point to That's consider an interesting point how to consider. we then want to support and improve yeah. and energetically enhance the quality of water around wherever we are, even if we're not going to drink it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's still us. Mm -hmm. If you take the separation, which is an illusion mm -hmm. out yeah. of, you know, your ideas of you and the mm -hmm. rest of the world, mm -hmm. then it is true. We are all one. And it's not mm -hmm. just we are all yeah. one as people. We are all one. One, mm -hmm. one organism water, here yeah. on this mm -hmm. planet Earth, <laughs> etc. And I think this is a perfect note to finish our conversation. Okay. Thank you so much, Halsey. I mean, this was such a jam-packed, amazing conversation with you thank, thank you, you so much and it's been a real pleasure talking thank with you christy it always is thank you and tell our listeners one more time how they can find you please www.goldenratioproducts.com and that's where you get all the cool stuff you've been seeing on the screen and that we've mm -hmm. been using for six i've been using for six and a half years yeah. Thank you so much, Halsey, um, for sharing all your wisdom, all your knowledge. I hope everybody who's listened got a whole bunch of inspiration out of that and education out of that. And I wish you all a wonderful week. We'll see you again next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. And in the meantime, remember to rebel on. Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. No way.
It could only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com.